the genesis for this particular tip came from the community. So in the community, somebody was asking about whether the browser could determine if the user is looking at the course in landscape or portrait mode on their device. And then what he wanted to do was then create instructions for, like, if you're on a portrait mode or if you're on landscape mode, and create navigation instructions for the course. So I, I, th I had, like, two basic thoughts on that before we get into that. So the first thing is when you're building for a mobile, I don't think you need to accommodate portrait and landscape. I think that's a bit of a faulty approach to course design. Like if you're in RISE, RISE is a responsive tool. So we use forms, and then you add your content in the forms. And so we know how that content, what the content structure is, and we could reflow that. So that's why RISE can respond to different devices. And so the content is going to reflow to fit that device. When you're working in Storyline, though, Storyline is more like a video, right? So when you have a video and you go on a mobile device, the video is just going to scale up or down. And that's kind of the way Storyline works, too, because Storyline is a fixed slide, right? So it's like in this case, it's a 16 by 9 slide. And when I look at it on a mobile device, it's going to scale. So like in this case, this is the slide in landscape mode, and it's wide, so it's going to fit the width of that device. But this is in portrait mode, so it's going to fit the width of the device. But as you can see, it scales down, and so you get this less than optimal experience. So I would not want my user to come into the course and see this. So I first thing I would say is um, lock the navigation, and we'll, we'll lock the orientation. We'll look at how to do that. The second point is on all that instructions. This is a side side point, but I think, you know, these players are all pretty consistent and universal. Um, and how you design your course and the navigation through the course should be intuitive. So I don't think, and I see this all the time, I don't think e-learning developers need to create these massive courses on how to use the course. I think you just need to make sure that what you have is intuitive and universal. And then, you know, if you do have something that you're not sure about, like if you want to show them how to navigate, just do it at the point of need. So when the slide's done, just have some sort of pop-up come up and say, click here to go to the next slide. And then that's all you need to do. And it's, it, then people have figured it out. Think about how many times you've gone online, you've gone to websites, you've gone, you go to eBay, you go to YouTube. Are they providing these navigation instructions on how to do things? So I don't think you need to have big navigation instructions for everything. But let's go back to the mobile stuff. So, so the key thought is when I'm building a course, I think this would be the case for any course. Most courses are going to be designed like this, right? They're 16 by 9, three, 4 by 3, or something like that. But they're going to be wide. So if I, wanted, if I know I'm designing and I'm publishing and people are going to access it on their mobile device, I don't even want them to see the course like this. What I want to do is turn that off. So the first tip is pick an orientation and lock it. So I think just by default, if I was building a course for laptops, computers, and mobile devices, I would pick my orientation. So most likely it's going to be landscape. So what I want is something like this, and then the person just turns their course, their, their device over. So what you do is come up here to the gear icon in the preview mode, and then you can see you can choose playback. So I say I only want it to play back in landscape on the tablet and the phone. So they're not going to be able to see they're not going to see this. They're going to see this, right? And so what happens is if I preview this in my portrait mode, it's just telling me flip the phone, right, or rotate the phone. And as soon as I rotate it, then I see the course the way it's intended to be seen. So that that's your first tip. So whether you're building for mobile only or just building course, I would just lock it to the mode that you've used for your aspect ratio. Most likely your slides are wide, so I would just lock it. So there's your first first tip. The other thing, there's nothing controversial about locking this. It doesn't have to be responsive. I 
see people have these arguments in the community a lot about, you know, having these courses. They complain that storyline's not responsive and they want the content to reflow. You don't need to build something that reflows. That's a I think it's a bit of extra work and, and really don't need to do that. Matter of fact, if you go look at some apps and I just pulled three apps I had on my phone, this is Duolingo. Duolingo is not responsive. I can only access that in portrait mode. Instagram, I can only access that in portrait mode. Google Primer, I can only access that in portrait mode. So they designed the apps to be accessed a certain way. And there's other apps that you can only access in um, uh, landscape mode. So I think when you're building a course, just pick an orientation and stick with that. And you, there's nothing controversial about having it locked. It doesn't have to be responsive. And then so that's your first thing. So pick an orientation, stick with that. Now when you build a course, you're going to have a player, right? And the player has features on it. So there's certain things you want to think about when you publish the course. You have your player with the features. The player's going to have this color structure. And then you also have this player navigation and other aspects to the player. So I would say, do you need those? Or that would be the question I would ask, or what do you need in there? So I would try to minimize it. If you if you look at your course, this is what the course looks like by default. In fact, if you go to your resource page here, on the resource page I publish the course in different examples. And you should take these links and look at them on a mobile device. It's not going to work on uh, on the desktop or laptop. So I would take these links and look at them on a mobile device to see the differences, right? But if we look at the screenshots I took, because I don't have my mobile device hooked up. So this is what the course looks like by default. So you've got your player, you've got your slide. I don't know how well you can see it in the webinar, but this is the slide border. So this is your 16 by 9 slide, and this is going to be optimized, right, because it's in landscape mode, but you still have all this URL stuff here from the browser. You still have, your, here's your player stuff, but you have all this empty space because the slide doesn't fit it. So the, the player's filling up your device, right, so this is your, your device is probably about right here, right, the player runs here like this. The player's filling up the device, but the slide is only so big and so you get all this empty space. So that's why you want to look at the player and say, well, what do I want in the player? What do I want to turn off? What do I want to turn off? What you can do is if you go up here in your player, then this is where you have all your player controls. And so you can turn things on or off and whatnot. Another feature that you have in your player is this ability to go into full screen mode. And I think that's what I have here, right? Now, this is the player here where I turned a lot of the features off, right? So it's a little bit cleaner. So that's where you want to think about, you know, what part of my player features do I want? So this is the default player here. And then this is the player with the features off. It made the slide a little bit bigger, but you still have a lot of empty space here, right? And I still have the URL. And then the next thing I would consider is do I want to have this toggle on or off? And if you toggle it, then you're going to get something like this here. And I just made the slide background white so we can kind of see what it looks like when it's toggled. Now all the player features are off, and I don't have the URL, and this is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. I still have a little bit of empty space here, but this looks a lot better than this, right? I mean, this is you get, well, where is that at? Than this right here. You get basically maxing out the slide up here, you probably increased it, you know, 50 or 60 percent. So there's a few different things you need to consider. One is, do you want to have the player and player features on there? Which ones do you want? The other thing is, how do you maximize the size or space? So there's a couple things you can do. One is you can toggle into full screen mode. The other thing you can do is make your slide wider. So this is the 16 by 9 toggled into full screen. And you can see I've got a lot of empty space here. But then this is the same slide, but it's at 16. This is 2 to 1, so I think it's like 2,000 by 1,000. And you can see in full screen it, it fills up 
more of the slide. So if you look at those examples I shared, if you look at the examples I shared here, you can see that. So this is, and again, you want to look at this on your phone, but this is the default player settings. This is the player settings with no controls on it. So I basically turned all the controls off. I'll show you how to do that. Then this is the modified player. And I put the light color on there, the white background. There's no controls. And there's it's triggered to go full screen. And then I also built one that's a little wider aspect ratio. And then I actually then built a different example that's in uh, portrait mode, so you, in case you want to do it, and that's a two by one aspect ratio. So you can play with these on your phone and see how they look and which ones you prefer. But I think the two to one aspect ratio is a good aspect ratio for a mobile device. So when we come back to the player, a few of the considerations we have. Let me actually go to a new slide here. So when you when you're in the slide and you're building your course. A couple things you want to consider. One is the aspect ratio. I think if I'm building for mobile, a two to one aspect ratio is good. So what you do is just come up to the design tab, go to slide size, and you can see by default it's 16 by 9. And you can keep that, I mean, it looks fine. But I would do two to one. So if you did 2,000 to 1,000, right? That's a two to one aspect ratio. Hit OK. Now um, this this content oops this content here is going to be all screwed up. But you can see it made the slide wider. So that's the first thing. Think about the aspect ratio of your slides. I think two to one works well, and you can test that on your on your phones. Uh, then the other thing you want to do is think about the player. So if you come up to home. And you go to player, you've got different features you can have or not have on the player, right? So it just depends on what you want to do. One of the nice things about Storyline is that you can get rid of the previous next buttons and you have swipe, swiping controls on there. So you could, you know, if you look at the triggers here, you can, when the user clicks or swipe, so you can just teach them to swipe left, swipe right and then you can control it that way. Or you can build your own buttons, or you can use the player controls. If you're using the player and you want to go into full screen mode, if you come down here on your player controls, you come down here and you can see there's a full screen option, and you can see then it adds that there. So when a person clicks on the full screen, then it's going to go into full screen mode, right? And then they can hit escape and they go out of Full, I guess they hit escape on their keyboard, but they can get out of full screen mode on their mobile devices too. So that's if you're using the player. So if you had a wider player, a wider slide, figure out what you want to have on the player, and then you can have the full screen option, and that'll maximize that screen, and you'll get something that looks like this here if that's two to one. In, in full screen. If you don't have the player controls, you can build your own player controls. Right? You can put your own buttons, swiping, whatever you want to do. To get in and out of the full screen mode, you need to create a toggle, and it needs to be click-based. So if we come back to here, let's say I don't want any player controls. I'm going to build my own navigation. If I come over here, you can see I have menu controls. I'm just going to go ahead and turn those off. Now I don't have any menu controls. So that also means I can't access that full screen mode. So that's okay. To access the full screen mode, what I would need to do is have some sort of click-based interaction to do that. If this was the start of my screen slide, this is how I would do it. I would put a new layer on here. And maybe I call that start, my start layer or intro layer, right? And you might do something like this where you have, you know, you know, welcome to the course, right? Blah, blah, blah. And then put a button on here. You know, get started. And then when you say get started, what you want to do, because you want to go into the course now, is I'm going to go ahead. 
I'm going to hide the layer when the user clicks, right? And then at the front end, I'm going to say I want to show that layer. So what I want to do, I'm going to show layer, the start layer when, the timeline of the slide starts. So what's going to happen is when I preview the slide, I come into the course, hey, welcome, get started, boom, and I come in here, right? Now, because I had this click on there, I can actually add that toggle because I have to have a click for the toggle. The user has to do something. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a trigger on here. And what do I want to do? I want to adjust variable. So adjust variable, which is down here. And I'm going to choose the pre-built variable. And you can see there's the full screen mode. Set player full screen mode to true when the user clicks the button. And I want to make sure that happens first, and then it hides the layer. So now if I preview this course, right, this slide, well, let's do this here. Let me do this. I'm going to set my, I want this only in landscape, right? So I'm going to preview this course this way. Oops, you're looking at it wrong, rotate your device. Now I'm in here, hey, get started, click. Now I got this message because it's only preview mode, but it didn't go into the full screen. So we're going to publish this real quick, and then you can see how that goes. But that, that would then take you into full screen mode on your mobile device. So if we, if we publish this for the web, and let's see how this looks real quick. Do, do, do. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and view this project. So see, now I'm in my, this is what it would look like on my phone, right? I click Get Started, and it's going to go into full screen mode. And so on your phone, and then you get rid of everything. So that's a nice way to do it if you're not using the player. So again, just to kind of recap this, when you're working with your slides, you know, pick an orientation, right? Um, pick an orientation. I probably landscape's going to work best for you. And then start to think about how you want to use the uh, player. And if you want to use it or not, think about the toggling, the full screen. You can do it on the player, or you can use that trigger like I just showed you. And then the other thing is make your slide aspect ratio wider or taller. So it could be 2,000 wide, 1,000 high, or it could be... 2,000 high, 1,000 wide, and so you you can you can play it's a two to one aspect ratio, and you can kind of see uh, what works for you. Those examples on the resource page here, again, if you look at those on your mobile device, uh, you'll you'll see how that looks. And then I also built an example of what it might look like in portrait mode, and so you might see something like this on your phone. And this is actually you'll see like. Right now it's not in regular, it's in just regular right in the browser. And then when I click start, it goes into full screen. And so you can see what that looks like on your phone. If you want to build something only for mobile and you want to do portrait, my last piece of advice is to go look at how other people are building uh, mobile apps. So I like to go to Dribble, which is a design website, and then I just look at different things people are doing. So you might get some ideas for layouts, colors, you know, the navigation controls. The other thing I would say is go to uh, just download a bunch of apps or look at the apps you currently use on your phone and just look at how they work with layouts and how they work with navigation and what type of instructions they give you. And you can get some pretty good ideas. Like this right here could be a start screen, right? Welcome to the module, start. This is, might be how you want to design your video screens, right? And it's just really content and then what type of interactivity you want to build in there. So choose portrait, choose landscape, really doesn't matter. Choose an orientation, lock it, and then play around with some of these other ideas and hopefully that gets you moving in the right direction.